Hello, my name's Graham Innes from Life Without Barriers, and I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners uh, of the lands on which we are making this video and people are, are uh, watching it, and their elders past, present and emerging. Life Without Barriers provides support to people uh, around, with disabilities all around Australia. And our first strategic goal is to deliver great services. We're proud to be the gold sponsor for the ACID uh, Virtual Expo in 2021. And we wanted to contribute to the expo by sharing a monograph, which we asked Leslie, Professor Leslie Chenoweth uh, AO and Professor Deliana Stelic um, to prepare called Addressing an Inclusive Future uh, for People with Disability in Australia. So my name, as I said, is Graham Innes, and I'm Australia's former Disability Discrimination Commissioner and a board member uh, with Life Without Barriers. And I'm talking today with Professor Leslie Chenner with about the monograph. Um, Leslie is an Emeritus Professor at Griffith University and still actively involved in disability issues. And her co-author, Professor Daniela Stelic, is also uh, Honorary Professor at Griffith. So welcome, Leslie, to this conversation. How well do you think we currently embrace and protect the rights of Australians with intellectual and cognitive uh, disabilities? Well, thank you, Graham, and thanks to Life Without Barriers for an opportunity to talk about um, the work that we undertook in the monograph. And of course, that uh, opening question, um, that's a very big question. And when, when we began and we reflected back at what point would we start to think about, you know, how far have we come? So if we look back 30 or 40 years, of course, life for people with an intellectual disability was very, very different. Mm. Um, it was prior to having a whole raft of, of um, different legislation and policy. So in terms of, of how far we've come, I think we have progressed quite a way uh, in terms of um, progressing legislation, Disability Discrimination Act. Uh, we've also moved ahead in terms of policies. But I think what we have to really take into account is there are still substantial barriers to uh, people with an intellectual disability in exercising those rights. So before we come to those barriers, Leslie, and I want to talk about those today, but mm -hmm. I mean, you and I would be well aware of what um, life was like 30 or 40 years ago mm -hmm. for people with disabilities, but many people in the sector um, may not have that picture. So no. um, let's paint the picture a bit. I mean, life for most people with uh, intellectual disabilities 40 years ago would be living in a large um, institution. institution. Indeed. Not much contact with no. um, the outside world unless there was, you know, maybe um, family visits for people who had mm -hmm. family with whom they were still engaged yep. and a pretty controlled life. That's the way it was, wasn't it? Absolutely. And on that, in that front, you know, things have changed dramatically, but that's exactly mm. right, Graham. All across Australia, we had institutions that housed hundreds of people with disabilities, um, largely people with intellectual developmental disabilities, but often um, people with other, other significant um, impairments as well. And that is very true. It was a life, a life of being congregated, of being segregated, and it was certainly a life of exclusion, profound exclusion. And, and there were so many rules and sort of arbitrary processes that, that um, went around that, weren't, weren't there? I mean, in any institution, uh, when you eat, when you go to sleep, um, guided mm -hmm. often by the, the, the needs, needs of, of the staff. Um, staff. Yeah. <laughs> needs of the staff yeah. and needs of the, of the institution primarily. And mm. people had every aspect of their life, all needs were catered for under the one roof as it were so yep. uh, they you know you you had you got up you all ate together um, you had things people might have had activities through the day but a lot of it was people just had nothing to do and yep. you know um, and so your health needs uh, everything was mm. all under you know you had the institution hair, hair cuts from the yep. institution's barber 
you mm. ate the food that everyone ate. And um, so it was a life of, I, I mean, very, there was very little choice, very little choice. And, and if you went out, and often you didn't, but if you went out, mm. you went on the special bus and you stayed yep. in a group um, of other yep. people with disabilities and you were very much marked as a group of people with disabilities um, mm. and segregated from the, from the rest of the community. So mm. what's your research and experience showing you um, about what inclusion actually looks like in a modern society? Let's move forward that 40 years mm -hmm. um, and look at what you've learned um, to inform where we are at present. Um, how have things changed? Um, well, that was a really interesting exercise in the monograph because Danny and I undertook a huge scan. We, we sought to find out, and this was particularly focused on uh, what, what was inclusion like uh, mm. and what was the experience for people, largely people with an intellectual disability, but people mm. with disabilities. So we did uh, quite a significant literature review. We actually also used our, in, our networks and we... We examined a whole range of uh, organisations, groups or movements that were essentially about promoting that. What was a good mm. life? What, what, what did inclusion look like? There were some really common themes that came through that as to, well, what, what are the features? What do we have to uh, have to really promote and support inclusion? Hmm. And these were, first, that relationships are central for people to be included. Relationships for them with family, with, with their neighbours, with people in the community. All of these programs and movements that we looked at, their fundamental focus was on human rights. So I think that's a really key foundation for these. Hmm. The, the next thing was that pe the people had choices. They may have had you know, limited choices about some things in life, but they there was a strong focus on enabling and supporting choice. Uh, there was a strong focus in all of them of how does a person have control over their own decisions. Um, all of them too had the person at the centre for planning and how supports were provided. And finally, and this I think is key, is that community connections are vital for that to happen. Mm. So that's a whole range of, and, and you can, you know, think about your own experience and what's going on in the sector in Australia. And certainly a lot of that is very much a feature, a lot of person-centeredness, personalization, an emphasis on choice, et cetera. But that, th those were the key things that we, we found uh, and, you know, one's own experience over many decades would bear that out as well, hmm. um, that this is, what, this is what we need to yep. achieve. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we haven't achieved that yet, have we? I mean, when you think oh. about people and where, pe where most people live, which is not in institutions anymore, um, but it's, it's in um, group homes or group accommodation mm. with people um, with whom they haven't chosen to live necessarily. Yep. Um, and they may have had some input into, but really um, it's, it's sort of congregate uh, accommodation. And there are some choices about the way those, um, that, that accommodation works, but it's still quite mm. guided by, yep. um, by the process, isn't it? So it sure we're, is. we're still on that journey. I mean, it, mm. it's improved, but we're not there yet by a no, long way, are we? No, no. And I, I, I mean, I think you're right, Graham. I think for many people, it's a constrained choice. Many people are still living with other people with disabilities. Sometimes that's their choice. Um, but I think, yes, we, we're on a journey here. And um, yeah, we've still got a ways to go. Yeah, Leslie, it's been fascinating to read the monograph and to um, talk with you about it. Um, and the monograph can be um, obtained from the Life Without Barriers website. I'd encourage those of you watching the, the video uh, to, uh, to have a look at it because um, we can't resolve those issues in the future unless we understand uh, the journey that's taken place and yeah. where we've come from. So thanks for spending time with me. Thank you so much, Graham. And Danny and I really appreciate the opportunity to share our thoughts on some of these things. Thank you.